Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you. In this video, I am going to talk about uh, the middle discourse 16 by the Buddha in which Buddha talks about five kinds of emotional barrenness, then five kinds of emotional shackles and then five kinds of psychic powers, cultivation of basis of psychic powers. Right. So that I am discussing a short summary. The detailed discourse is available in the link below uh, in the description. You can read the detailed, the full exact discourse. This is just a summary that I am giving of my understanding of this discourse. So basically, uh, it is given that, so I have heard at one time Buddha was staying near Savathi in Jetta's grove. Uh, there the Buddha addressed the mendicants. Mendicants are the monks. Right? Buddha said, mendicants. When a mendicant has not given up five kinds of emotional barrenness and cut off five emotional shackles, it is not possible for them to achieve growth, improvement or maturity in this teaching and training. So basically, what are the five kinds of emotional uh, uh, barrenness that Buddha talks is? Number one is the doubts about the teacher, right? So, uh, and who is our teacher? Our teacher is the Buddha, right? So any, the doubts that we have see what my understanding is buddha never said never doubt me buddha even said that even doubt me right it's quoted in the dharmapada but important thing is that the doubt so what if the doubt is at a surface level if we keep doubting then we will not go deep in our practice right buddha suggests a way out of the doubts coming out of the doubt also that we will discuss i will discuss later on but the first uh, emotional bar kind of emotional balanceness is doubt about the teacher they are uncertain, undecided, lacking confidence. That being so, the mind doesn't incline towards keenness, commitment, persistence and striving. This is the first uh, emotional barrenness. Second emotional barrenness is doubts about the teaching. What is, what is being taught? Doubts about that. Third is doubts about the Sangha, the spiritual community. Right? Fourth is the doubt about the training, whatever is the training that is given. Right? Fifth uh, is... Uh, the mendicant is angry and upset with their spiritual companions, resentful and closed off. So, while this uh, talk was given to the uh, uh, mendicant, the monk community, even if we are lay people and we are part of a sangha or a spiritual community, and if we are resentful or, or closed off uh, with our community, that can also be a, a emotional, a kind of emotional barrenness, which can impact our spiritual growth. Right? Now, now then Buddha says, what are the five emotional shackles they haven't cut off? Shackles are like chains, right? So, first emotional shackle is the mendicant isn't free of greed, desire, fondness, thirst, passion and craving for sensual pleasures. Right? This is the first shackle. Second shackle is mendicant isn't free of greed for the body, right? Greed for the body is second. Right? Third is mendicant isn't free of the greed for form. Greed for form. Right? Anything which is of form. Right? Mendicant isn't free of the greed. So the greed for body is number two. Greed of form number three. Fourth is uh, the fourth emotional shackle is which keeps them shackled is they eat as much as they like until their belly is full. They indulge in the pleasures of sleeping, lying down and drowsing. This is the fourth shackle. Fifth is they lead a spiritual life hoping to be reborn in the orders of gods, thinking that by this, observing this precept or by doing this uh, austerity uh, or spiritual life, may I become one of the gods. This being so, their mind doesn't incline towards kindness, commitment, etc. Right? So, Buddha says, when the men mendicant has not given up these five kinds of emotional barrenness and cut off these five emotional shackles, it is not possible for them to achieve growth, improvement, or maturity in this teaching and training. So here we pause for reflection. So the five kinds of emotional barrenness, what Buddha says, doubts, right? Doubt about the teaching, about the about the teacher, about the teaching, about the sangha, about the training, and upset, being resentful with their. So we need to reflect, right? It doesn't call for any, you know, immediately uh, response in terms of yes or no. But we need to just reflect in our practice if any of these doubts that we have. Right? That is what we need to do and be mindful of that and ensure that we do something which helps us dispel the doubts. So, for example, doubt, uh, Buddha says, how you dispel the doubts is by making deeper inquiries. Generally, what we do is that we just do a, 
surface level you know uh, learning right so those when we are on the surface level then there are doubts which are on the surface uh, about the teacher about the teaching about you know lot of things right whether this path is right for me so we need to make deeper inquiries about what is being taught look at see either what i understand is either go this way what your master has taught you or choose another way if you follow a particular spiritual path and then keep doubting then what will happen is that your own growth will not happen right so if you choose like i choose the path of insight right of the the the, the, the satipatthana sutra then i will go deeper i will just stick to that path make deeper inquiries consult some other teachers on uh, some other learned persons about the understanding of these sutras and then clarify my mind and then proceed so we should not have that then when buddha talks about the uh, uh, shackles emotional shackles then there again we need to just reflect that uh, is there a greed desire fondness thirst passion we all have right somewhere or the other we are see that's why we are in this cycle of birth and death and we are in doing our practice so being more mindful of that these things chain me these things kind of um, they they have chained me for so many lifetimes buddha says very um, uh, very good thing that uh, uh, what are more uh, like the four waters in the oceans the waters in the four oceans or the amount of tears that you have spent uh, in all these lifetimes the answer is the latter right so we need to think that these kind of the 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 desires the cravings they are holding us right this goes back to the noble truth number 1 noble truth number 2 the cause of suffering so all these discourses they take us back to the noble truths and the noble eightfold path second shackle greed for the body greed in any way right we need to reflect in our life third is eating as much uh, uh, until their belly is full we need to have moderate moderateness in our eating right uh, being being mindful uh, of our eating eating only moderately sleeping moderately right then then leaving fifth shackle leading a spiritual life we do all these practices with the intent to be born in a like a land of gods or, or order of gods this is very very important you know a lot of people you know their practice is that i should be in heaven right or i should be in a land of heaven or something uh this the here buddha has specifically uh, talked about this and said that see buddha's path if you see is very clear this one thing that we have you have to go for is liberation from this cycle of suffering so you don't intend to be uh, 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 uh working your your aim in your spiritual practice is not to be born in a heavenly realm and all this all will happen in the course of your desire to get liberated this all will happen you will be born in we will be born in conditions which are conducive to our growth but if we try to limit ourselves limit our aim that our aim is to be born in a uh, uh, in a order of gods and all so that is that becomes an emotional shackle right so we need to be very careful in terms of what is our end goal of our practice right okay then buddha talks about the basis for psychic powers what my understanding is that basis for psychic powers is the powers that help us be free right so buddha says they develop the basis of psychic powers uh, that has emotion due to number one enthusiasm and active effort right so we have to develop enthusiasm in our in, in us second the basis second basis is energy and active effort third is mental development and active effort fourth is inquiry and active effort fifth is sheer vigor so uh, so we discussed five emotional barriers we discussed five emotional shackles and this is the five bases of psychic powers so buddha says a mendicant who possesses these 15 factors all the 15 positive things including vigor is capable of breaking out becoming awakened and reaching the supreme sanctuary from the yog and now buddha gives the example of a chicken right a chicken who has eggs and she is like sitting on top of the eggs now buddha says even if that chicken thinks doesn't think that uh, uh, that one of the if my eggs should break out and uh, if my uh, ch- chicks could break out from the egg shell with their claws and beak and hatch safely even even then the the eggs will break out if the so if there are eggs and the chicken properly incubates uh, those those eggs then eventually they will break out similar way buddha says if we follow the 15 factors properly we try to uh, you know not have doubts we have proper spiritual practice we 
we pay attention to our mental development, put our attention to our effort, then even if we don't have a conscious desire to be enlightened, ultimately we will become enlightened, right? This is the natural thing that will happen, right? So this was uh, the uh, uh, middle uh, middle discourse 16 uh, on emotional barrenness and emotional shackles and psychic powers. I hope you found it useful. Please reflect uh, uh, on, on your practice, what emotional shackles and uh, these things are in, in, in your practice. So be, be more mindful, that is it. And do share in the comments your, uh, your feedback and your thoughts. Uh, the sutta that is mentioned in, uh, is there, the link of the detailed sutta is given in the detail. And tell me uh, how uh, was it valuable? Uh, did, did it help you in any way? Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you. Namo Buddhaya. Namo Buddhaya. Namo Buddhaya.